morning, everyone. I'm I'm Xu Lei. I come from China Intercom. Uh, we have uh, three speakers today. Uh, uh, let them uh, have an introduction first. Uh, I, I'm Kai from Nanan Club. Uh, I'm Hu Wei from Intel. To today's topic is China Intercom's edge orchestration system in 5G to manage Starling X, uh, Kubernetes, and OpenStack edge disease. Uh, let's have a quick review on China Intercom 5G edge in Open from Berlin Summit last year. Uh, we de delivered a session named Comparison Between Open Edge Projects and ETSI MCRA with uh, Intel and uh, 99 Cloud. Uh, we showed the design of uh, China Intercom Edge platform based on open front structure op uh, op uh, projects and it's uh, accord with the uh, uh, ETSI MEC re uh, refer re reference uh, architecture. Uh, last year we have the uh, design and uh, today uh, we have had the online system supporting the MEC business. Uh, we will show, show you the de de deliverable and the backend uh, uh, details. First, let me introduce uh, the China Unicom Cube Edge. Uh, 2019 is a, a 5G commercial year of China. Uh, five days ago, on October 31st, uh, China's 5G networks, uh, networks uh, went live, uh, and China Unicom established the brand, uh, the the nth power of 5G. It means uh, with the slogan, uh, let the future grow. Uh, we commit to the uh, uh, innovation uh, technology and uh, uh, enable the industries and bring um, uh, unlimited uh, experience to users. Uh, from 2G to 5G, uh, the uh, technology is constantly updated. And now the China Unicoms is focus uh, edge uh, is focused on uh, industry uh, focus on uh, digital transformation uh, transformation for in industries. Um, and the, uh, as I say, the edge cloud is a key infrastructure for the next generation IT. And uh, uh, we will reform the traditional business uh, with the uh, MEC and uh, to support uh, innovations uh, on MEC with AI, big data, and the mobility. Today, China Com is supporting 60 edge projects over um, 20 provinces around China. For example, we uh, cooperated with uh, Tencent uh, NetEase uh, on cloud gaming area uh, and, uh, and cooperated with BMW and Chang'an uh, on the uh, intelligent connected vehicle area. Uh, we also incubated uh, uh, innovation uh, products and uh, explore new business models uh, like in, uh, intelligent manufacture and intelligent uh, smart health care, new re retail, smart ports, mm, and so on. Telecom is building the uh, uh, 1,000 edge nodes uh, around China. Uh, involving, uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, the Cube Edge uh, platform, uh, service platform uh, have three layers. Uh, they are the infrastructure layer, the capability uh, layer, and the uh, app and the service layer. The 
uh, infrastructure layer can provide uh, the uh, virtual, mach uh, virtual machine and uh, content resources, and ca capability layer can provide network uh, capabilities such as low balance DNS uh, net uh, virtual uh, firewall, and the and can uh, provide application capabilities such as uh, VCDN, uh, AI, IBI, and so on. And uh, we uh, have uh, a central site for operation and maintenance. Uh, we have built a business support center, including BI BSS, uh, OSS, marketing support, and uh, customer service support. And we also uh, do the uh, management and uh, uh, orchestration of apps uh, in the center site. Next, uh, let me introduce the architecture overview for uh, QBH. Uh, the numbers of MEC in the future uh, will be very uh, huge, uh, involving three levels of DCs. Uh, they are central DC, regional DC, and edge DC. In central DC, we have OSS uh, uh, and uh, MEC Developer Center and uh, NFVI, uh, uh, NFVO, WinFM, and the MEAO uh, QG, uh, orchestration. And uh, in the regional DC, uh, the MEPM take charge of the Life cycle management of app, uh, the MEDC, the ICE, and we also have the uh, regional uh, monitoring and the cloud edge orchestration. Uh, and uh, in the uh, edge DC, we have uh, lightweight uh, ICE and uh, the CAS, uh, and the uh, on top of that them is uh, as a VAS and the fonts. Uh, let us uh, le let me introduce the deployment architecture. Uh, MEAO deployed on central DC. Uh, MEPMs are deployed on uh, 31 regional DCs and MEIs deployed on edge sets. This three tiers architecture is to support uh, Edge applications quickly deployed to Edge as needed. And the central MEAO is connected to BSS and OSS. According to 3GPP standard, traffic rules are configured by MEPM via NEF interfaces. And uh, the UPF, uh, WinFs, and the MEP modules will be deployed in Edge DCs as needed. Uh, UPF will be deployed by NFVO and MEP will be deployed by MEPM. In most cases, uh, LDC, uh, that is the shared infrastructure model, will be the first option to provide ap application hosting if client agree on the SLA in latency, bandwidth, and the security. In some uh, two big cases, one side client, DC, means a dedicated infrastructure model is also supported, in sp in especially to some strategic um, partners. Okay, next uh, turn to Ikai. <coughs> uh, okay, I, I would take over the demo part and uh, the uh, detailed uh, text behind the behind this demo so uh, this is a video um, uh, we're gonna sh can sh it's okay uh, sorry it's around two minutes demo so uh, this is a diagram to show a one edge DC. Uh, you can see the different part of the edge uh, in inside a uh, specific edge DC. 
This is show the list for ice, uh, not actually not ice, it's all include some uh, like a Kubernetes uh, dark uh, uh, infrastructure. And uh, we have a uh, uh, geo, uh, thi this is just a demo because it's not a live uh, in, uh, in the production, but uh, you can see the functions. We can see the geo uh, for those uh, HDCs. And uh, um, this is a, a deployment for our application. You can see first we have a, a very basic uh, uh, application. You can uh, input the uh, application descriptor, uh, description name, and those things. Uh, second is uh, select uh, uh, ice uh, to be deployed. And uh, the third one and the, uh, the, the fourth one is very important to add because you need to define the rules, uh, especially for the uh, network rules, uh, including DNS rule and the traffic rule. So uh, this is uh, something I will uh, we will uh, talk to later in our um, application describer design that uh, we need to define some policies in uh, related with those two two parts. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> so <coughs> it's just replay. Sorry. So um, define the rules. Define the um, traffic. Uh, you know, uh, the destination and uh, the uh, source uh, network information. <coughs> so we deploy our uh, application. Uh, this this will show we will talk this later because this uh, uh, if you're familiar with uh, um, VNFD uh, uh, VNF uh, describer you will will be know the Tosca uh, uh, describer it's uh, to define uh, VNF right but uh, we also implemented in uh, edge application but that is that is not um, all uh, because we have some um, called native applications so. We use uh, YAML to define it. We will intru introduce this later. <coughs> so uh, this is show um, uh, a skill policy define the um, the incremental you are, you are going to scale out or scale scale down, or the maximum um, size of the application instance you are going to uh, scale. So uh, this is a demo for the change of the scale, uh, do the scale out. Uh, scale down. So we, we also will demo um, upgrade. Uh, this is a VM-based application actually. Uh, so we can both do uh, VM-based application and the doc-based, container-based application. Uh, we need to uh, define the uh, application descriptor to enable those uh, scale up and scale down policy. This is when you upload an uh, application from raw image, uh, you need to add some, uh, you know, actually this is a kind of process to define the descriptor. Uh, we develop a self-service tool that to enable uh, third-party users to import their application via a uh, raw image, and uh, we can add uh, those uh, describer informations uh, in the backend. So this is for upgrade. Okay, that's it. We will just show a, a full life cycle for our application for from um, uh, deployment, uh, scale up, scale down, um, uh, upgrade, or, or import, uh, import, uh, import for the application package. 
and uh, this diagram actually this uh, we, we cover more than uh, application what we show is just from uh, um, you know sorry this is still in some some words is still in Chinese this is the official repository uh, production repository to the edge DC Th we just show the life cycle to cover the uh, edge uh, application distribution and edge application develop uh, management and uh, we also have a life cycle uh, before the application we we can allow uh, ISV to upload the uh, um, uh, application via image or we we also provide a source code base uh, for uh, I including uh, like a, a CI/CD process and artifactory process to enable the uh, development uh, lifecycle for application. So the under layer sh shows uh, the, the change. This is uh, for source code, and we open some API to allow them to call the call the uh, capability we exposed in Edge. They can use those ap APIs to enable their applications. This is an image, this is a raw image. Uh, after raw image, we need to add some describer information like uh, in YAML or Tosca. Uh, we then become a, 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 you know, official, official image, then go to production deployment. Okay, uh, we are going to introduce the backend uh, technologies. Um, uh, for this design, we will cover four topics. Um, first is uh, the, uh, the we, we implement a lot of, uh, um <coughs> this is a high level uh, uh, picture. We are going to in implement uh <coughs> some already in this this uh <coughs> system, some is uh, uh, some module is uh, in our plan to implement. L like uh <coughs> we uh, enable OpenStack, Kubernetes and the StartX, we can compatible for those underlayer uh, infrastructure. We also enable <coughs> Heat and uh, Helm and the uh, Airship is in the investigation to see we can enable it, uh, it or not uh, in our solution. We also use some um, ops tools to do the uh, data collection for those uh, operation information. And another module we are Currently, in investigating is openness for the <coughs> data plane part. Uh, we will introduce la this later. This is a very special. Um, if uh, uh, you are managing edge DC because there are traffic from the <coughs> user side to your edge applications, and uh, so <coughs> again, this is a full life cycle. First, uh, we will talk about the um, options for edge DC. <coughs> when we look into this diagram, actually there are uh, uh, several different uh, um, type of uh, uh, object we are going to do orchestration. Um <coughs> like uh, we have, a <coughs> like a, uh, this is a actually a CT part, uh, UPF, or in 4G it's a D gateway, uh, or uh, okay we call X D gateway. Gateway, right? This is actually defined in the ETSI standard. It's a, it's a DP part, and uh, we also have some uh, applications. We expose some service. This is a value added service. We, in short, it's a we, well, we we call it VAS, VAS, and uh, we also have some firewalls that uh, to uh, managing the ITCT uh, boundary and the uh, cloud edge boundary. <coughs> so you can see we have different type of uh, object to be orchestrated. And uh, <coughs> this is a uh, to show that for the different type of the objective, we uh, this is a destination uh, we are going to host. And uh, uh, some 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 objective we are we we can cover the CI CD and the microservice governance uh, process. Some of them is not included. But uh, anyway, in summary, uh, we we have a uh, some requirement. If we uh, uh, if the application is a uh, VM based, like uh, some VM based application, or especially for some uh, v VNF or some uh, we call it MEP, especially for network functions, they need uh, like acceleration for DBTK, or uh, need uh, original is only support VM based deployment. So we need a VM, uh, and we also have some. 
functions like uh, um, like uh, China Unicorn expose some uh, vehicle service in the future, and uh, 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 FNS is some functional network service exposed to to third party application to use. So those uh, services will be cloud native. We are trying to build a cloud native service backend. So we need the Kubernetes as a backend infrastructure. So <coughs> this is very, uh, because uh, starting X is still in the, uh, from version one to version two, right? Still in the, um, in the process of uh, 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 to be a production uh, 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 ice uh, in the edge. So uh, we 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 can support b uh, all those three different types. <coughs> and uh <coughs> now we have three. We have different objective, uh, and uh, we have different uh, uh, target infrastructure to to host those different object and. Uh, how to describe application is a problem. So we we need to go to the um, sorry the upper layer. There should be some title is in okay. Okay, uh, challenge two is about the edge application describer. Uh, when you when we look into ETSS standard <coughs> in <coughs> in this uh <coughs> in this white paper, they have a uh, application describer <coughs> defined. <coughs> so uh, when we look into the details, uh, some most uh, uh, attributes, I, I think it's a very quite straightforward, like uh, the name, like the provider, but uh, some. Specific uh, attribute is uh, uh, actually related with uh, uh, edge education. Let's say it's uh, uh, traffic, DNS, and uh, latency. Those attributes are very important to edge. So we have for this for this um, uh, reference uh, reference uh, application descriptor proposed from ETSI. How how do we um, you know design a Real uh, describe it to solve the attrition uh, attrici attrici purpose. There are several candidates. Uh, in sorry, again. Oh. Uh, we have several candidates. Uh, first is Tosca uh, for the. For the VNF guys, I think it's quite familiar with Tosca because we define the VNF in Tosca format, and uh, we also have uh, existing YAML uh, YAML uh, 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 described for the cloud native application, and uh, in uh, OpenStack we are quite familiar with whole. It's actually a YAML style, but it's uh, for VM based applications, and uh, we also have Helm chart. So this is a. Uh, uh, how we uh, def define the different um, drivers and uh, the uh, ap ap application descriptor format. Uh, for the VM-based application and uh, the DP, MEP, network-related related, um, um, object, we will go use uh, Tosca because it's, uh, it's uh, mature. And uh, when, wha when you look into those features, like a scale in, scale out, it can easily find the a reference from Tosca uh, format. And uh, for VNFs, I think uh, there are a lot of VNF validations in telecoms and uh, uh, those those experiences uh, uh, can be reused in the application. But uh, for the cloud native, in the our, our original design, we are using Tosca for um, cloud native application. But uh, lately we found it's uh, a little, uh, uh, you know, some, some um, for mo a lot of developers, that uh, they develop a uh, cloud native defined by YAML. So the actually the process is we change the format from YAML to Tosca. Then when it uh, goes to the detail uh, under layer, we call A pass. It's also translated from Tosca back to YAML. So it's uh, sometimes uh, we found uh, later we found it's uh, maybe it's not a uh, 
a good design, so we change it back, use the raw YAML as uh, described for cloud native application. And uh, actually, uh, one one thing we're missing is uh, in in China Unicorns, uh, the uh, China Unicorns ecosystem, there are some uh, extend like we uh, we together with like Tencent, Baidu, or U um, Ali. They have some actually self own edge eyes actually software based. So they have a uh, some application uh, ecosystem behind those uh, uh, platform. For those things, we need to uh, follow their standards to do the uh, application describer because it, it can be easily to import uh, the backend uh, ecosystem via their standards. Okay, so the fourth part is about uh, as a module that is not that familiar with the IT guys. Uh, in ETSI, when you look into the uh, reference architecture, uh, people might be confused about the MEP, MEP part. So what MEP's major purpose is actually is, uh, to handling the uh, life cycle for application, like uh, registering, health check, and uh, uh, subscription, those things. And uh, also um, cover some scope in network. So uh, uh, so we have different, um, you know, uh, approach to to build our MEP. First is we build the code from scratch. Second, um, but it's uh, not that easy. Uh, so we have a uh, uh, currently Intel open uh, um, uh, project called OpenNAS. Uh, this actually is a new open source project. Hopefully. It it can be imported in uh, OpenStack Foundation, but uh, uh, we we think it's uh, uh, when we look into openness and uh, who we will introduce this later. When we look into openness, it uh, can cover some scopes for the MEP like uh, service authentication, service registering, uh, especially for the DNS part. They have a DNS library from IP to domain name, and they also have very important. Uh, is um, DNS local redirection. Th this is very key for edge redirection, and uh, you uh, it also has some capability for for manage the um, N6. If you you're familiar with uh, the uh, the the um, VNF architecture, uh, their uh, interface they can handle those uh, data plane uh, from the uh, UPF or the gateway. Okay. So that's it for the for the uh, demo and the technology details part. So wait. Thank you. <coughs> uh, so uh, I'm away from Intel. Actually, uh, I work for a uh, software department for Intel. So our role for this case with uh, uh, Nana Cloud and China Newcom is to uh, support our ecosystem partners to leverage some open source project to speed up their you know uh, edge computing uh, 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 application development or some you know uh, some deployment in their real uh, product environment so uh, my part uh, so I would like to give you uh, some updates on some uh, open source projects that uh, that we help uh, Nana Cloud people and uh, China Unicom people uh, in this case. So uh, let's fir first start with uh, Starling X project. I, I put this slide from our uh, Starling X uh, project update on the keynote. So uh, for this case, actually, I, I it is well aligned with our collaboration with China Unicom because uh, when you start, uh, start uh, look at StarX, it is actually a relatively new open source project. It is open source on last year, uh, May, on uh, Vancouver Summit. And uh, at that time, we have our first release on actually on October. And at that time, uh, we begin some collaboration and some early evaluation with China Unicom and Nanaka people to see how we can help them for their you know, edge, uh, edge DC uh, project. And then 
uh, we come to, as Ken mentioned, uh, we are now at the phase two of Starling X. It actually, we have a very important release, 2.0, on September. And uh, it is a very, um, I would say, a very big uh, change for Starling X. And uh, the most important part is we uh, integrate Kubernetes platform into the stack. And uh, that means we provide container support. And as a community, we grow steadily and with a lot of uh, you know ecosystem partners like China Ucom, like Nanite Cloud people, Nanite Cloud. And also, um, we emit a lot of patches. That means we will uh, run completely on unmodified OpenStack release. We don't, as uh, StarlingX, we don't keep local patches. So in the future, uh, as we can see what we are doing in this case is also align our uh, goal is we want to partnership with our OS ways to uh, service providers, these partners to scale, to, you know, to have real uh, deployment of Starling X. So that's our next phase. So uh, on this page, I would like to give you some updates for Starling X 2.0. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a uh, very uh, big release and a very important release. So I list here some very high level update for Starling X uh, release 2.0. So uh, it actually turns everything upside down. So <laughs> the first one is uh, uh, as a community, uh, we do a lot of work uh, to uh, to build the technical ecosystem and to you know to invite contributors from all, all over the world and uh, uh, also, you know, the study community is kind of uh, uh, governed as a, a very open source way. So we elected the technical theory community, uh, you know, from different companies. So this is a, a, a lot of work around this area. And second one is, as I mentioned, we have a huge stride in involving the architecture of the project. I will give a, a, a specific uh, slide for this one. So, and this the rest of the big update, including we uh, added, uh, uh, we added uh, significantly to our documented suite and uh, do some security enhancement, uh, some easy of deployment uh, enhancement. And uh, for the networking part, we do a lot of work to you know, especially for the edge computing, some high performance component integration into the stack. So also we in integrated, you know, like uh, some PDP protocol for uh, highly accurate synchronized uh, timing. So this is some uh, details for the, for the, uh, what we have done to achieve these goals. The first one is, as I mentioned, in, uh, in, uh, when we announced Starling X and also in uh, Starling X uh, 1.0 release, Starling X is actually a hardened OpenStack platform. Uh, of course, with uh, some enhancement and some added component, uh, like we call a uh, flock services into the stack. And starting from uh, 2.0, uh, 2.0, we uh, integrate Kubernetes platform. And uh, uh, Starling X is now a uh, cloud native platform to uh, to support both uh, VMs uh, by OpenStack Nova components and uh, 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 and bare mental service by uh, OpenStack Ironic comp components. And now we support uh, container uh, by uh, Kubernetes platforms. So the current architecture is kind of like uh, on top of OS, the first layer is Kubernetes platform. And upon that, upon Kubernetes platform, uh, there is uh, the, uh, the OpenStack run, uh, is, uh, run as a containerized uh, uh, services on Kubernetes. So with that architecture, uh, the Starling X uh, is provide some uh, f uh, very flexibility for the you know, end user and our OS partners for different requirements for their use cases. Like Ken uh, like mentioned in their previous slides, uh, in some cases they need some VNF, VNF uh, workload, and in some cases they need maybe some 
uh, container workload for their uh, use case. So that's a big change for StyleX from the architecture per, uh, perspective. So for other things, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we eliminate uh, patches against uh, up, uh, upstream uh, stack, open stack. So um, uh, actually, uh, 2.0, we contain five patches against Nova. And I think the latest status is uh, uh, these patches has been uh, accepted by, uh, by the OpenStack upstream. So it means uh, from now on, um, uh, StyleX will run completely on, on modified OpenStack. Now is we migrate from the uh, 1.0 on Pike, now on Stan, so we we will, you know, um, keep the, uh, in, you know, uh, upgrade uh, pace with the uh, upstream OpenStack component. So this is uh, uh, some uh, update, big update from the uh, architecture purview. And some other features, like I mentioned, we have uh, a lot of work on documentation suite. And uh, uh, if you are interested in starting X, you can go to the wiki site, you will find it has a uh, completely refreshed wiki, a lot of content there. You can either as a developer or either as a, a user, you can find a lot of information there. And for security part, we have enabled the TPM devices to store the secret and uh, enable the UF, uh, UEFI security boot on the, uh, on the stack. And uh, for the configuration and deployment side, uh, as I mentioned, for the uh, for the initial host environment, we uh, leverage we use Ansible for the uh, uh, configuration deployment, and after that we use the Amanda and the OpenStack Helm to deployment the OpenStack service uh, uh, on top of uh, 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 Kubernetes. So for the network part, we support IPv4 and IPv6 for stack and Calico as the you know CNI uh, part and uh, some uh, integrated uh, Matelas and SRLV for high performance networking uh, capabilities. And uh, we integrate PDP uh, protocol for the uh, accurate time uh, synchronizing uh, protocol. And with all the architecture and some uh, big change, we refresh a lot of many uh, components to align with the, you know, the OpenStack stain and update, updating the storage uh, part of the stack self to uh, mimic version. So that's for the StyleX. And uh, the second open source project that we think we can help uh, China Unicom and uh, uh, Nana Cloud for this case, for this collaboration is called Openness. Uh, openness is actually um, from previously it's called Intel NEV SDK, Network Edge Virtualization uh, SDK. And now it is uh, open source and rename, renamed to Openness, stands for Open Network Edge Services Software. Uh, I got this one from the uh, Openness uh, website with the uh, brief introduction and some um, uh, some points why we do this project. So uh, basically, openness is an open source reference toolkit that you know to enable the ecosystem, uh, especially for the um, uh, integrator and the application developer to uh, create and deploy the new edge application and service services so it will make easier for them because uh, our goals here is uh, the first one is as you can see it abstr uh, abstracts out the complexity of the below uh, network protocol uh, on the edge node and also it enables some uh, you know uh, very important features like secure onboarding and management of applications with uh, GUI uh, uh, Web, uh, web portal and also it uh, provides some common uh, uh, function functions uh, for the uh, edge node like uh, access terminations traffic steering uh, all kinds of these things and also it 
provide uh, expose some uh, standard APIs to the developer to the uh, web edge uh, edge application uh, developers. So this is our goal, and uh, this is uh, for the project information. And uh, since it is a relatively new, uh, younger than uh, StyleX, so you can find more information on the GitHub and uh, the source code is here. Uh, you can have a try for this project. And the last uh, slide for my part is uh, uh, a little bit uh, detail for this openness project. Uh, you can see uh, openness uh, including uh, several important modules, including the DNS service, the traffic policy, and uh, uh, especially I, w I would like to mention is the we call data plan services is on the uh, this red block of this uh, on this diagram. So this is kind of uh, uh, DBDK based uh, data plan software implementation. So uh, especially for this case, I think uh, Nanic, uh, Nanic Cloud has uh, uh, would like to leverage this uh, you know this openness project, especially this NTS uh, component, to to have a try in this to. Uh, for this China Unicom uh, project. So uh, other things like edge node configuration, edge node interface configuration, because we have different traffic, you know, from the UE side to the edge node side, we need to some uh, configuration for different uh, traffic type for, uh, for the edge node, for the edge platform. So yeah, that, that's, that's what I have for, the, for, for my part. How about the time? Do we have a have time for Q and A, or run out of time? Okay. Five. Okay. So any question? Uh, so what 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 five G standard do you support? Uh, SA or NSA? Uh, what? Wait. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, in this architecture, we uh, we can all support the NC and NC and also the the, the 4G uh, EPC. Uh. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>